one. So this is the colony that we did a shuck swarm on last week. It was showing signs of moving towards swarming. We'd seen cups and we'd seen cups with eggs in. I've taken a chance that by shuck swarming them, giving them a whole new box of foundation and giving them something to do might distract them enough to not keep moving forward towards swarming. We've been in today and we've found queen cells. What we tried hasn't entirely worked. It was a kind of a halfway attempt at a shook swarm, but it hasn't entirely worked. So we're gonna to have to split this colony, artificially swarm this colony. So I've already found the queen and I've moved her into a new box on the frame she was on. And I've double, double checked that there are absolutely no queen cells on that um, frame. So she's safely over there now. I'm gonna use one of these snail growth boards, which has got all these funny little doors around the edge. And I'm going to open a side door in the upper entrance and that will be the new entrance for the bees that hatch out, the nurse bees and the brood and now orientate to this side entrance. So we're going to have two hives basically stacked on top of each other. As I've said before there is a really complicated method where you can balance up the bees coming into the top box by opening side doors so the bees would then go in the bottom box and you'd open a back door for the bees that are just emerging. It's a way of bouncing them up. To be honest, I don't really do that. I just open a side entrance and use a very simple version of the method. So we've got the queen in there. We've, sorry, we've got the all the bees in pretty much in this box at the moment, and that box is going to move out of out the way. I'm going to leave the floor here. So that box goes over onto our snow growth board. box, the new brood box that was the shook swarm box is going to go on the floor. Now that has the queen in it on a frame of uh, brood. No queen cells on it and she's got one other drawn frame in there to work on. Now hopefully all the flying bees will go back and they'll start drawing comb like crazy in the warmer days we've got to come and they'll build up this colony. If I was really nervous I would put a queen excluder underneath it. I'm taking a slight chance not doing it but I think it'll be okay. We'll see. Queen excluder on. This colony had two supers on it previously. One has got quite a lot of stores in it, one's got very little. I'm going to put the one with a lot of stores on here because they're going to need as much energy as they can to draw out the cave. So this is quite a decent box of honey and that's going on top of the new colony in the original position with the queen in. This crown board needs to come off. Now this snail grove board is going to go instead of the crown board with the old colony which is quite heavy on top. Now I've been through this colony and I've reduced it to one queen cell on a frame that I put a pin in to mark it. I've also moved that frame slightly to the centre of the box. So all the entrances are closed, apart from a new entrance at the side, at the top. All the flying bees are going to come out here. This isn't home to them. They're going to orientate back to the front and go in. The top box is going to be a new home to the brood and the nurse bees who've never left home, when they emerge, they'll only ever know that way was home. The second super is going to go on here. There's very little in here, but it will give that box space. Sometimes colonies, even though they've lost their queen, they can be reasonably productive. So I'm going to give them a bit of extra space. Roof on. Job done. Hopefully we've, we've uh, stopped that one swarming. And because we're limited on space here, we've done this vertical split rather than the horizontal split. That's it.